the book you talk about the importance of having the right people, the right environment, and the right processes. Mm -hmm. So how do you build an, a learning organization? How do right. you put this in place? Where I start, and you noticed it in the book, I take a very behavioral approach right. to learning. Take a very behavioral approach to innovation and, and, and et cetera. So let's define the behaviors we want, okay? And let's just assume for a moment, great learners are people who are open-minded, okay? Uh, good listeners, okay? They know how to critically think, okay? They know how to innovatively think, and we'll explain this in a minute, okay? So critically think means we're willing to test our beliefs and have other people challenge us. We're open to looking for facts which disagree. So that means we are, we have, we're willing to critically inquire. We're not going to be defensive. Okay, yeah. we seek out feedback and debate, all right? We like debate. We are, if you will, uh, always trying to improve. So we have processes for improvement. Uh, we're always trying to create new things, so we have processes. So these are ways of thinking and then ways of, if you will, the behaviors are listening, non-defensiveness, open-mindedness, attention, okay? Engaging in learning conversations. We could go on and on, okay? I have a list in the book. Mm -hmm. So let's start with those. So let's pick critical ones and say, okay, this is what we want to teach and train. Now we gotta have a culture that enables and promote this. So what kind of culture do we need? And in the book, I, I list out a high-performance learning organization checklist, okay? Um, and what the research shows is that culture needs to be a positive emotional environment, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It needs, you need to have high employee emotional engagement, which means the environment must meet basic human needs, all right, which basically Becky and Ryan self-determination theory, which is autonomy, relatedness, and effectiveness. The culture must be one of candor and authenticity and permission to speak freely, okay, so long as it's respectful, so anyone can challenge. Hierarchy is devalued. Mm -hmm. Rank, okay, no longer, it's the, and I tell the story of Intuit, where no longer are decisions made in Intuit based on power, position, and PowerPoint and politics. And they're saying it's time to bury Caesar. Mm. Hierarchy, hierarchy gets in the way of learning, debate, critical thinking, innovation, okay? So you don't do away with positions, but you devalue it, mm. which means it goes back to intellectual humility and leadership humility of people. Um, so I have all those skills, so I have to create a culture that does that, as, as we're describing here. I also have got to take a different view of mistakes. Mistakes are learning opportunities because the two biggest inhibitors of learning are ego and fear. Mm -hmm. So my culture has got to mitigate ego and it's got to mitigate fear. Fear of trying mm -hmm. and fear of making mistakes, so long as mistakes are within financial parameters. I mean, if somebody goes off and does something crazy and loses a billion dollars yeah. and they were only authorized to lose 10,000, well, they should be fired, right? right? Yes, okay. Mistakes are learning opportunities. That means you, you, know, you learn if I'm making the same mistake over and over again, I should be held accountable. These organizations have mutual accountability, not just accountability up, mm -hmm. but the top is accountable going down. If you are my manager, you have the obligation and right to hold me accountable for my behavior and everything, but I also have the obligation to hold you accountable. That's a change in corporate America. Big okay? change. Big change. Mutual account, yeah, big change. I want to work there. Big change, well there are some <laughs> companies that do it. Uh, mutual accountability, so I've got to have the right environment.